Welcome to Unmuted, where we got your gaming and esports hot topics, hot tweets, and hot AJ Fry. Oh, thanks, Lisa Dewan. So if you're new here, this is how the show works. We're going to put two minutes on the clock for each item. We're going to discuss, banter, argue, other things. And if there's a, there's also a <laughs> shut up button. I don't know what other things are. We'll find out as the show goes on. Uh, so if either one of us hits this uh, button while the other is talking, we'll be muted for 30 seconds. You'll mute the other person. But then you got to fill that 30 seconds yourself. It's true. Easy. I'm going to just, I'm going to put this here because I know you have a habit of not pressing it. So I'm just going to claim the button for me. I don't All right. Like being nice. I don't like it. It's not about being nice. It's about trolling the other person. See what I just did there? Talked over you. Easy. All right. So shout out to the chat. We like it when you call us out when we're being stupid and we want you to get in on the discussion. So get unmuted and sound off. All right. We're going to kick it off with one of our stories here on a serious note mm. as one Overwatch player has retired for a very important reason. Dallas Fuel's Effect announced over the weekend that he would be retiring from the Overwatch League due to mental health issues. Effect said he has been dealing with mental health issues his entire life, including depression, self-harm, and suicidal thoughts, which were intensified by playing Overwatch professionally. He is planning to rest and recover for some time, but he may return to streaming in the future. Mm. All right, AJ, this is a serious issue. So let's make lots of jokes. No, uh, <laughs> not this time. No. Um, do you feel like the league or esports in general is doing enough for players that kind of go through depression? I think that uh, actually esports overall is a fairly progressive thing. It's uh, usually looking out for their players. We do have another story about mm -hmm. not looking out for their players <laughs> coming up in just a bit. Yeah. Uh, what I think really uh, fans need to look out for the players hmm. uh, well-being so. obviously well you know how often do you see these tweets about like griefing players and just harassing people you don't know they're you know you go to any sports arena and you you suck all that kind of negativity whoa, and now whoa, because whoa, whoa, thanks whoa, whoa, whoa. to social media but we get all, it all the part time of sports like I why suppose. is it all of a sudden that we're gonna like you know censor ourselves this is all part of the game you kind of have to know going into sports and competition that that's gonna happen so maybe yeah, but, we're treating them differently you know we but stop doing that let's try to change Change our community. There's so much toxicity in it. Uh, you know, this is also me at the desk. You're not wanting to push. Uh, I know. You know, I'm just like, let's just add more love to it all. So try not. If you're thinking of sending that toxic tweet to someone, if you're, uh, you know, going to leave that nasty comment or even mm -hmm. shout out at the arena, you don't have to. It's not adding anything. If someone's sucking at a game at a professional level, they know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's my. Don't take. you think that's a little bit like babying the players? Because I mean, it's all part of life, right? Handling criticism, True, handling hate. But let the players smack talk one another. If you're just in the fan in the crowd, you're obviously not at their level. So like giving them the toxic stuff, that's just adding to the you know the mental strain. No, the mental I feel AJ, issues. you're taking away one of the best parts of being involved in sports and esports. It's you become one with the team and the player, mm. and that's what they want, right? right they want so you to be invested. Lisa's in so, favor of you harassing no, people who have mental I'm not health in issues. Of course. AJ, <laughs> that is not true. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying it. I like the idea that you say that, you know, as a community, what we can change is, you know, on social media after a game, I know a lot of pros yeah. say, like, they get a lot of hate, like, unreasonably a lot of yeah. hate for things that they don't, people don't even understand. So I yeah. think as a community, we need to stop actually tweeting at the pros, just random hate messages. That's not okay. Yeah. But when you're at, like, you know, a crowd and you're a live event cheering for your favorite pro sure. and, like, heckling the other one, yeah, it's yeah. kind of part of it. Live, I'm okay with it. You know it. what just, I mean? You know, after the fact, let people rest, recover. And exactly. Exactly. You know, but major big ups to like effect yeah. taking this step, realizing that he's also not the first player recently to have done this. I know Stellar, I think just last week, also said the same yeah, thing. Like he's going through mental yep. issues, but he's stepping back. He realized this is not for him. Yep. And it's a lot of pressure. There, it is a lot so. of pressure, which right. also makes you wonder about player burnout. Like, mm. what if this is a bad time for esports? I'm, gonna you I'm sorry, there's just, there's just so much going on. You might have right. okay, fine, throw. In okay. other Overwatch news, <laughs> Los Angeles Gladiators Tank Bishu has signed a temporary two-way contract to play for Gladiators Legion for the next few weeks. Legion is, of course, the Gladiators Academy team in Contenders and is a bit short-handed at the moment after Atlanta Reign signed OAFRD. Bishu will still play for the Gladiators, but most of his time will be preoccupied with Legion. So disregarding the fact that Legion is short-handed, do you think uh, Overwatch Watch League player should be allowed to play for academy teams. Ooh. Is there a limit? What are your thoughts on this? So this whole double dipping thing. Because yeah. I know, like in other esports, like with League, they have rules regarding this, right? So you can have an LCS player play in academy, but there are like limits to it. Like you can only do it for mm. a couple of weeks. Um, and I think there has to be like a beforehand notice and stuff. So there's actually like rules to implement this. Yeah. But in terms of like integrity, I don't know if I feel like it's okay for top tier players to kind of play in the academy and help them win, get that first place spot and then like dip out. Like how is that fair? I think it is fair if you limit it to one player per pro team. 
Okay. Like if you have your player who's kind of designated as your guy who's going to be your flex on both. And in mm -hmm. fact, in this case, uh, th this player is uh, a flex player, as mm -hmm. it so happens. <laughs> so I, I think that's okay that you have one guy between two teams, one guy or girl. Yeah. Um, and it's a great opportunity to pass along some of that information from your pro team to the contenders team to, you know, unify the two teams together so long as you keep it as your one person you're not like and we got three guys moving back and forth yeah those that's my take that's actually a good point and you just on that note like i'm for this because having an actual top tier player come to the academy league and play that is a great learning opportunity yeah. for everyone in that league who don't get the chances to actually play with the top tier right yeah. it's almost like getting them a taste of it's, the big leagues. It's not even playing, it's just those the behind the scenes conversations, that opportunity to be in the same room as a pro player, you know, pick their brain and, and have those chill kind of conversations and that, yeah. that mentor mentality in your locker room, if you will, for your contenders team. And I'm okay what? with it, so long as it, it isn't too many. It's you know, interesting that in. Overwatch League is kind of having this issue. Like maybe this is a sign that there's too many Overwatch pros. Like, do you think you follow the Overwatch League? Is yeah. there just too much talent? Well, there's lots out there, and it's it's interesting the way that that different teams compose their talent rosters because yeah. there's like just stellar players who are so amazing, but they're not necessarily that good at mm -hmm. following direction and following into the coaching and gelling with their team. So yeah. it's about managing those kind of players. So, you yeah. know, if you've got someone who's really good at playing on either team and you want to keep them in both, I think it's it's That's fair okay. for one pro team as long as they're not overcapitalizing yeah, on that. Over so. double dip. All right, yeah. moving over the League of Legends, Riot announced that the in-game shop will be significantly reworked in the future. The developer said that instead of reworking or improving items, it will get rid of them outright because few people are using them. Hmm. Mostly because they suck. <laughs> That's great logic right there. In their place, Riot will slowly introduce new items to create additional builds for characters that lack diversity. All right, AJ, so what do you think about Riot's de decision to this is what they decide to do with items that well, aren't. Well, as soon as I hear bought. game developer and shopping changes, I am relieved that it's an in-game shop that they're oh. talking about oh, no yeah. real-world monetary no, value no, 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 to this. No. So like, okay, cool, that for starters, uh, that's <laughs> great. Uh, I haven't played League in a long time, so mm -hmm. uh, for me, I don't even remember what all the items in the shop were. But yeah. uh, what, basically what they're trying to accomplish with this is just to clean up the shop so that when people are actually buying things there, they're not having to scroll past and uh, you know move beyond these crappy items that no one's taking anymore. That's when so, you know you're a scrub, and I'm saying this because I do this, is when you don't know what item that you want to buy so you just like you scroll through the whole shop to try to look yeah, for yeah, it yeah. but You're pros they long. literally they, they type they it in they're and they're buying it right away so yeah. it's kind of like this is more for the casuals and scrubs like me I suppose but still like if there are people and even casuals aren't using the items then mm. get rid of them and you know put out new items that people are gonna like better or but utilize more is this the lazy way for Riot to handle this issue because I suppose you could just completely patch the whole thing, like yeah. do it all in one foul swoop and, and redo your item inventory, but that would really mess up your meta of the game, especially if yeah, you're Yeah, like because Riot's everything. so good at balancing and managing. It's mm -hmm. an ongoing project for mm -hmm. them, I suppose. I don't know, I think they, so like they've had a lot of flack in the past for taking an item and just reworking it yeah. and then releasing it for the next patch and then having it just cause chaos. Yeah. So maybe this is them learning from that time and they're like, you know what? Instead of us trying to put a Band-Aid on items that aren't that good, let's yeah. just get, get rid, rid of, of them. The bad ones. Yeah. And they're announcing that they're going to be adding new ones in the future. Oh, but for the short term, removing a few items that no one's using, I think is beneficial for the health of the game. Just That's hopefully true. there's not like those two guys out there in the world who actually still use them going, Aww. no, my whole strategy is crumbling before my eyes. That's true. Well, it is spring, so they're doing a little spring cleaning. But. All right. For our last story, we're going to talk about Call of Duty drama. Ooh. Oh, yay, it's happening again. Everyone's favorite <laughs> slash least favorite drama reporter, Codburner, revealed on Friday that Red Reserve was not paying its players a share of their recent winnings. Furthermore, the team also has not paid its players a salary in months. Red Reserve's players confirmed the news on Twitter, and now Red Reserve is a few steps away from turning into an actual dumpster fire. Uh, yeah, not paying players is a terrible uh, thing. Is this a call for a players' union and Call of Duty scene? What are your thoughts, right, Lisa? A hundred percent. I mean, okay, the whole union thing is a huge issue, right? Because there's always pros and cons. Yeah. And we see some scenes like League of Legends, and I think CSGO also has like an official players' union, mm. but I wouldn't say it's super effective. There's always issues with it, whether yeah. it's electing the right players and being represented um, like fully, right? Because then there's issues with like League of Legends and Call of Duty. They're like CSGO, they're worldwide. How do you create a union that 
really protects everyone yeah. and you know like the region is so specific so there's so many logistic issues but then there's things like this that makes you like okay yeah there needs to be something to protect players yeah this is ridiculous Maybe instead of unions because that could get complicated with yeah. all the different games and you know play styles a sort of an esports player pro player charter of rights that mm. if you're going to be participating in a league the league you know adheres to the problem even there is Sorry for my language on this. There's assholes all over the world in yeah. every industry who are the kind of people who are not going to play or pay the people that work for them. I have experience going years back to with my dad to like a guy's house and he's like, I need you here because he's not going to beat me up in front of my son, but I need to ask this guy for money. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it's a harsh Tough world times. out there. There's lots of like instances <laughs> oh like this. God. It's not just esports. So no matter what you do, you're going to run into these circumstances. But yeah, we got to make sure that as a community, we fans support the players who have not received their they're just deserves. You know what's really crazy about the story? I read the full article. So apparently the guy who's not paying his players, yeah. it's simply because like he's caught up in fights with his personal wife, like with his wife. That's exactly So he yeah. has no time to pay these players. Like what the he actually just all of a sudden told him to get out of the house that he's paying for. Like they right. literally just kicked him out. Kicked him it's out just on the, the guy who's consumed with his own problems and is inconsiderate of the problems of Why other people. Why are we letting these guys own teams? Paid. Maybe this is a thing on the developer to like screen these owners better. Like, why yeah. is this guy owning a team in the league? Well, he the had money. Fudge. <laughs> oh, it's all about the money. It is. There you go. All right. Now it's time to see what streamers are up to in Clip It. Get your tissues ready because our first clip comes from Edison Park and it's going to tug on your heartstrings. I have my mom's ring. That she got from her, from my dad, for, for uh, when he proposed to her, and so. Uh, <laughs> so Leslie, will you will you marry me? clip teared a little bit like they were both bawling their eyes out and this yeah. is so sweet and it should be their special moment together not in front of thousands of people watching on twitch i don't what know what do you man. mean i just i just feel like that proposal moment should be something that's special it's about your bond with another person and i you know i proposed to my now wife um at disney world and had the thought of like i could go full cheese with this but i didn't do it <laughs> Out like in front of the Magic Castle, I did it in our hotel room, so it was just a moment between the two of us. But wait, hold on. Why? Why is it just having people be there not be a personal thing? Like they were into each other. That was a very personal moment. And note that they are streamers, right? So these are people that put their lives out in front of yeah. people on the daily. So, so he's that's exploiting this moment, knowing this will get huge views, huge reshares. That's not what engagement should be. That's not what your marriage should be. It should be about. You know, your union together, helping one another, not sharing it with no. the world. No, AJ, I do not support that. Because first of all, that is AJ telling us what we have to do with marriage. You can't tell me what I want to do, like my engagement, it has to follow this kind of rule, or ha like a wedding has to be this. Like, listen, these people are streamers, okay? Like they've dedicated their career to being in front of the camera and they're giving their lives to us, okay? And the fact that they actually let us in on this moment, that's amazing. And they're not any different from people who do reality shows or people who propose in front of their whole families or the other friends or baseball games. Like people do it all the time. So you know what? This is actually a precious moment that we shouldn't be sh dumping on them for. And I think it's actually beautiful that they were able to be that intimate with people. Because you know that's not an easy thing to do. So you know what, AJ? I want you to take your negativity and pack that away. Because just because you wanted it one way or you did it one way doesn't mean that everyone has to do it your way. OK? Got it? All right. Oh, I know I'm unmuted. They're oh, telling me oh. I'm unmuted. I'm just enjoying. You just gave me my, my time, my time to shine. Go for it. Keep Wait, going. No, I'm good now. <laughs> uh, unmute. Where's the unmute button? <laughs> All right, our next clip comes from the Overwatch League, where the interviewer made an assumption about a supposed language barrier. Ooh. 
Congratulations on the win. And now I heard, you know, you had a crazy month. Um, you're like the talk of social media right now. Everyone's really hyping you up. Can you kind of walk us through your journey coming into the Overwatch League? Uh, 자, 일단 Overwatch League에 들어오신 거 너무 축하드리고요. 이번 지난 한달 동안 또 굉장히 굉장한 한 달이 되셨다고 제가 좀 들었어요. 어, Overwatch League까지 오시는 이긴 여정을 어떻게 됐는지 살짝 좀 설명 좀 부탁드릴게요. So first of all, I started in a way um... Um, joining Open Division team. <laughs> That's uh, so good. Yeah, what Yo, an amazing moment. Oh my god. Uh, he actually does have a, a fascinating story of just playing like one game pre-contenders, getting signed to contenders, playing mm -hmm. one game contenders, then getting signed to the Toronto Defiance. So a fascinating story. But yeah, it would have been maybe beneficial if he had uh, let the floor guy know, like, yeah, actually, I do speak English. You don't need to. Wait, do wait, that. hold on. Why is the onus on him? Why is it not on the interviewer to do his, you know, or research? On Overwatch League or the producers behind the scenes to be like, yeah, by the way, you don't need to translate. Yeah. Has anyone spoken to this guy before? <laughs> well, like, how did they not he know really he spoke did English? Just get there though like his <laughs> his trajectory was pretty impressive okay. it was his first game after his first game that's why they wanted to talk to him about this amazing rise to the overwatch league yeah. but just funny that they didn't realize that's that he was so perfectly comfortable answering the question in english now aj obviously we've both done our interviews you know our share fair share of interviews have yeah. you ever had a moment similar where perhaps you flubbed you know, you well, made an I've assumption. Done lots of <laughs> clubs, yes. Um, and I've done lots of interviews through translators before, and they're not always the easiest. And I've certainly asked a question and then gotten an answer back, and I thought, like, something was definitely <laughs> lost in translation there because that answer does not apply to my question in any manner. So how did you handle it? I just moved on because ultimately we were just talking about video games at the time anyway, and it's yeah. like, well, we'll just, I'll ask a different one. You know what you can just do also in the editing process, you can just fill in the subtitles what you want them yeah, to say. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's what we do. No one's going to check. No one's going to check. Exactly. Of course. Oh. <laughs> All right, moving on. It's time to see what the pros have been saying on social media with profound thoughts. First up, we have a tweet from Smash Pro Hungrybox. He tweeted, You lose to an opponent 2 0 in bracket. This is their controller. <gasps> what game or character were they playing? So obviously you see the box, <laughs> yeah. one button, the Pac control Man? stick. Pac-Man, Pac -Man, right? Oh my god, you're like, so logical about this. Do you, yeah, do you even need a button for Pac-Man or was it just the joystick? I can't remember. No, 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 you there are a... buttons, aren't there? What are they for? He's always going around, map, 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 like, There's no button to press. It's like the button you press to go across the street. You know what actually doesn't have any input, but it's there psychologically so that people feel like the weight is shorted. Did you guys know this? Oh, the button of the button for pedestrian crosswalks. I don't it know, actually man. doesn't have an input. They time it. Like they've already programmed the time. So the button there is purely for psychological, so people feel like, okay, you know, I'm actually doing something. I, I can see that at busy street corners yeah. during the day, but at night, I mean this even happened to me a few like nights ago. Busy street, I'm like, okay, I guess I'm gonna have to use the button to cross the street rather than just waiting for a break in the yeah. traffic. So I push the button and then immediately all the traffic goes away. And I'm standing there That's going. That's just the power of AJ Fry, guys. Well, do I wait and use the crosswalk <laughs> light so that whoever comes up to this intersection with a red light? Do you not? Upset you at don't me? jaywalk? No, I ended up jaywalking because oh. I didn't want to wait around. But, Whoa! Yeah. Just to made it to a crime. We end up on jaywalking from a weird button controller. <laughs> button there. All right, next up, a tweet from Rainbow Six Siege Pro, laxing, uh, with no shame. He tweeted out, "Hate when people screenshot my naked pics on my Snapchat story. Like, chill." So, yeah. Sure, guys. Yeah. Um, so, AJ, uh, do you send nudes? <laughs> this is an interesting topic to find ourselves talking about on the internet. Uh, I don't anymore. <laughs> oh, my sure. God. I didn't think you were actually going to answer that. Well, uh, okay. do you? Have you? Um, uh, through Snapchat? No. Not through Snapchat. Okay. But I feel <laughs> like that's the safest place because they go away, right? But then there was no, that like, it's Snapchat. Not. It's leak not. some years back where a bunch of people, yeah, so. Yeah, I think I saw your nude in that mix. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> oh okay, but obviously, well, actually not obviously. Hopefully laxing you is... You would have properly blocked it from your memory, which is why you're hesitant to say. <laughs> Spam Kappa and chat for AJ's nudes. All right. <laughs> for our last profound thought, we're taking it to Dota 2 personality. Sir, action slacks all this guy. He said, one reason I know I am not ready for children is because I want to do stuff like teach them Digimon were real just to F with them. And deep down, I know it's wrong, but at the same time, it sounds really funny. Yeah, I'm not going to be a great parent for similar reasons. Yeah. Have I told you this plan that I have no, what's to your prank plan? my Let's kids? Freak it so remember the, the movie The Blair Witch Project? Oh god, yes. So I'm going to chop off the beginning and oh. the end credits and I'm going to, you know, 
dub it down to a VHS and bury it in the backyard. And then one day when we're doing housework, I'm going to uncover this mysterious VHS, hook up an old VHS player, which of course my kids are going to be like, what is this weird ancient what is technology? This weird box? And then play the movie for them so that they think that it's actual found footage. AJ. Yeah. That's messed up and it's, it's brilliant. Wait, it's, you're gonna have to have a VHS like player heading like. I still have one around. in a box somewhere specifically so that I can do this prank when my kids are old enough that they won't be entirely traumatized, but just a little bit traumatized. Perfect. Just the, you want your kids to be the perfect amount of traumatized. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, let's get to some <laughs> crowd control where we find gaming content on the web that's expanded our minds, increased our intelligence, and made us question existence. Ooh. Actually, it's mostly dumb stuff that made us laugh. <laughs> our first item comes from a Reddit user, Denatrix, who provided a picture of an interesting ceremony. Oh. Um, now, I'm not even second. sure what's going on in this photo. Is, is that we? a satanic? Oh, hold on. So there's actually text that comes with this. So step ah. one. Pile four PlayStations on top of each other. Step two, yeah. pray to your satanic lord. Step three, PS4. Step four, profit. So is this like the behind the scenes of uh, at PlayStation, how they came up with the PlayStation 4? I suppose. It does have an interesting design about it, so. It's kind of just like a skinnier version, isn't it? Yeah. But you know what's really cool about this picture? I feel like it's a call to Full Metal Alchemist. Doesn't it look like the alchemy? Have you watched, do you watch anime? Mm. Mm. All right, well, we now you know where to send the hate. Uh, yeah. So Full Metal Alchemist, it's about <laughs> alchemy, and that's how they like summon things. They put a little circle on the floor, and they do like their hand stuff, and then boom, things pop up. Like on Supernatural with Sam and Dean Winchester. How dare you? I'm Don't sorry. you talk shade about Full Metal Alchemist. I'm not talking it shade. is top three animes ever. I don't care if you disagree. I don't okay. care if you disagree. All right, our next item is confusing and unusual. Reddit user 5 underscore frog underscore margin found the following for sale on eBay. For a cool $1,500, you can own a fridge full of Jurassic Park, why are you excited? Cartridges for the SNES. Um, why? Okay, there's so many questions here. There's so many questions here. Yes. Why would you want a fridge? Oh my God, there's more. There's more there. Oh, there's a second picture. Two years ago, Zebra Killer on Reddit posted this picture with the title. You are at your friend's house and asked to use their bathroom, and then you see this. What do you do? What? I mean, going back to how we started with mental health, uh -huh. I mean, I think you would have to ask your friend about their mental health yeah. and, you know, engage them in a conversation about their obsession with Jurassic Park and yes. find out whether they need help or... Or take them to Ikea because, you know, you can yeah. buy shelves for these things. You Organizing know, your collection is, is a healthy thing, a healthy way to maintain I don't get it. I don't get it. Why is there life? so... First of all, why would you want... I don't understand people who buy multiple copies of like, the same game. There are people who do that and... I don't understand that. Why? Why would you need to do that? If you've got an answer, let us know and share. Yeah. Maybe like they don't have a card to save, you know, or like... I have, I've bought so many copies of certain games, but it's always for different systems, like Grand Theft Auto V. Wow, Mr. Bougie, okay, how many systems well, no, you got? It's how just, many games you can buy? So I can play with different friend groups, you know, you gotta get it on PC, and then the original, was it the Xbox? Did it come out for Xbox 360? And then the Xbox One X, and you need a different version. Oh my God, AJ. There's just so many different PlayStation. But also questions, why is it in the bathroom? Why would you, would you keep your games in the bathroom for any reason? Well, like, if it's crappy, it goes in the uh, bathroom. Uh, I like that joke. I wish I didn't use the mute. Next up, did you ever feel restricted by Fallout 3 and its anti-child killing policy? No. no just me. Okay, oh anyways, gosh. it looks like a Reddit user uh, DJC2306, <laughs> great name, uh, did. Give me that sweet roll you got from old lady Palmer. Oh, yeah? We'll see about that. I'm sure anyone would be sorry, you little Oh! Taken out right there. Uh, uh, okay, you know what's funny? At the beginning of this video, I was like, okay, if a kid talked to me like that, that kid's getting smacked. Yeah. But that might have been a bit of an overkill. Literally. Maybe a little bit. Shotgun? Yeah. It must um, have been a custom mod. Did you ever have a custom mod? No! no. Listen, I'm the most like, basic gamer ever. I bought the game, one copy of the game, mind you, yeah. and I played the game straight as is. I don't have the skills to mod a game, and I wouldn't do it like that. That's a little messed up. I did a, AJ. I did a mod once for a quake. In What'd that, you do? So, oh, no. you know, in learning about modding and stuff, I realized that if you just like rename certain files, the game will break and play in different ways. So I made all of the guns shoot out like gibbed body parts. <laughs> 
in, in the original game, Quake, simply by like renaming the model files called for in the... What's the enjoyment of that? Bring me to a, like the mind it's of a modder. Silly. Okay, well, first of all, I was like 11, <laughs> and it was just like, hey, I can make the rocket launcher shoot of like get body parts instead of rockets, and they would leave trails of blood instead of smoke and fire, and it was kind of funny and ridiculous when oh. I was 11. That's not what I would do now um, as an adult. On that note, that's all the time for Unmuted. <laughs> Let us know if you find anything you want us to talk about and hit us up on our Discord and socials at Squad State, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. <laughs>